plants love the carbon. Like, when we all get to heaven, right. <laughs> what a glorious day that will be. And, and, and we won't be worrying about, is it going to be cold today? Right. Am I sprinting in a bra? <laughs> You know, just be this glorious sun shine, the SO1 shine yeah. for all of us. Right. And we'll have the light of the world. Amen. We won't need no more darkness. There'll be just his presence forevermore. Oh, what a day that will be. Yep. <laughs> That's a song. We will shout the victory. Yes. That's a song we need to sing. Yeah, I've got to remember that. My mind is remembering. Seems as I'm getting older, I can't remember things anymore. Welcome to the senior world. <laughs> I'm only 63. What's going to happen when I'm 83? Oh my goodness. I'm really going to be in trouble. My bones ache. My father is going to be so Come on. I'm only a year. Uh, uh, no, I'm 64. I'll be 65 in October. I'm a year and a half older than you okay. guys. So. <laughs> well, I, 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 I know, we know. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you get 20 years on it, as I can imagine. So, well, hopefully, I'll do it just as good as you're doing. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, every day that you get up, get out of bed. Amen. Amen. All right, got a minute. Good morning, my love. Yeah, I still can say. Oh, I Oh. Yeah, she usually does. It. She probably was waiting for a treat. You probably should have just brought her down here. You should just bring her. Well, she, it, when we had it in our... Yeah, when we were in our uh, home in, in, in Baja, in Mexico, uh, we had the church service small group in the home, and she would participate, and she'd sit there and listen. She was a better listener than some of the people that came to the house. <laughs> <laughs> and this one picture, Mariana took when I had COVID, H1N1, and influenza type B all at once. And I had to preach from home. And we put it over, I pre recorded it. And she got a picture of me. I'm in the corner, like, and there's my dog, Faith, looking at me, just staring, just sitting, watching me. And it's like, so cool. There's my dog listening to the message, right? So it, was a, it was a pretty good photo. And she wasn't falling asleep. I was like, no, I don't get it. You gotta have fun. When I used to do papers, and then we go to the Salvation Army afterwards. So long as we were getting up and down singing, I was fine. As soon as we sat down and the message started, oh my yeah. Well, some people say you know they concentrate more with their eyes closed. Is that so? I don't know if that's true. Or not, but. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Kind of like when you pray. So I was praying, Pastor. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, <laughs> That's your tail. I sit on my right? <laughs> right. I heard them all, so you can't, you know. I used to tell my mama, I rest in my eyes. Yeah, she's resting your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Use them too much during the day. So uh -huh. <laughs> all right. Well, it's 11. We're going to get started. So, good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Bob Tarashak, or Tarasiak, for those who want to pronounce it in English. Good old Polish name. We welcome you all to Believers Together here at Homestead. Village, we're here, we're family, and especially today, right here, we're the family of God. Amen. And we're brothers and sisters in Christ, even though I'm the only guy in here. I want to have the gay look. He came three times, but then he just kind of faded off from where maybe he's going to another place for church. I don't know. But probably not. He's probably, he's, I think he's up and down quite a bit. Okay. Yeah, I see him. People pick him up when he takes to appointments and stuff on the street once in a while when I walk on the dog, so. Well, we'll keep him in prayer. But anyway, uh, we are Believers Together. We're here every Sunday at 11 a.m. As a matter of fact, coming up, I think on the days of March 9th, or one of those days, we're going to have to spring ahead and move our clocks ahead. So, uh, but I'll let you know. We, we all will all know anyway, so we follow the news and everything. Yeah, um, Chloe had asked us at the resident meeting, and I told her that I had you check in with her. She wants to know if you're doing a special service for Easter. Okay. Um, not that I know of yet, but I'll uh, well, look just, at the schedule and see. Yeah, just let her know before she puts out the weekly reminders, okay. and that way she can put it on there if you... Will do, yes. And so, yes, and so um, every Sunday, 11 a.m., and of course, people watching live streaming, and this goes on the Facebook page, which is included here in your handout. If you, if you need a handout, it's online at believerstogether.org or .org. 
And I've also posted the, the uh, I thought I did, uh, the Facebook page where you can go to, uh, well, I guess I didn't, never mind. But it's San Felipe so, Believers. Or you can look up on Facebook Believers Together and it'll come up and you can click on this and you can go to the live stream in that way for those who have it. But the handout, they can get at the Believers Together. I put it on the, 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 web, uh, the Facebook page, the website. And I also uh, put the scripture reading here, everything's here, your words, the message, sermon points, tithes and offerings locally in the box or online, whichever, or, and uh, closing song, and then of course scripture readings there as well, and then I got a place for sermon notes on this one. And so anyway, this handout's available online, you can print it out, you can watch it on your tablet, watch the words, since we don't have a TV screen, and a screen I can put it in the computer and put it up there, ask Chloe to buy a TV for us. Yeah. You do have it. You do have the Facebook. Oh, do I have it? Oh, yeah, there it is. Yes. Sounds really great. Super. It's on there. All right. And, and also, uh, speaking of that, uh, I put down in the Bible study, too. We have the online one at 1 o'clock, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, we're using Microsoft Office Teams. It's a live interactive thing where you can use it on your phone. You can get a smartphone. If you have a tablet, if you have a computer with a video camera and, a, you know, and speakers, and you can talk and and we we're currently on Tuesdays, we're in 2 Thessalonians. And also on Thursdays, we're in Isaiah, going through the whole book of Isaiah, verse by verse, we've been doing that now. But also here, Thursdays and Tuesdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 4 o'clock, is a Bible study as well in prayer time, I guess you have so locally. So you have two different options on Tuesdays and Thursdays to attend. And so, um, and also prayer requests, we do pray every... Tuesday and Thursday, and I pray daily with the wife usually. And so, um, so if you have any prayer requests, fill out a prayer card or send an email to me to rtoresiak at gmail.com or drop it off at my door, 232, and we'll gladly pray for any prayer requests. And also, I forgot, I was going to make a little um, a sign up sheet like thing, a card, information card. I'll give you next Sunday. Because I don't know where everyone lives, just in, you know, your room number or phone number or email. And that way, if I need to knock on the door and say, hey, I, I need some sugar or something, that, you know, I can knock on your door. I'm baking a cake. Or, and you can have a piece if you give me some sugar. You know. No, no, cookies. Oh, I, I don't need them. So, anyway. Uh, hello. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, just have information. It's just kind of sort of contact. I can send some information or keep in touch with everybody. And of course, I'm in 232. All right, and prayer request again. Prayer request, some of your prayer requests. We gladly pray for those things we have needs of. Uh, prayer is important. It's our communication with the Lord, and um, that's a very important thing. And, and also, more importantly, is to hear from Him as we look at the Word of God in our Bibles and uh, let the Lord speak to us and show us what He wants to reveal to us. Maybe there's something in our hearts, a little bit there, so maybe we need some more teaching or some counseling or some comfort. Uh, you know, this world has gone wacko and crazy. I've been looking at some websites about some of the things happening with Iran and things, the potential of a nuclear weapon. Uh, within days, they can make I mean, so really, this Israel and all that help thing, Middle East, is really getting very serious. And so I personally believe the rapture could happen any moment. Uh, if this is just aligning very good. The temple stuff, they're ready to rebuild what happens, and they start building it. The, uh, you know, Islam, the, the Muslims are going to be mad. It's going to, I mean, it just... It's just going to go crazy, so we have to look at Israel. Israel is the key to prophetic things that are going to happen in the last days. And so I really believe, I've been looking at some things and studying the word heavily into it. And there's a lot of things that are lining up. So uh, thank you, Lord God, that we have Jesus. Otherwise, we'd be in trouble. Uh, it's, you know, we have the hope we have something greater than this world. So, All right, well, uh, who did last time? Did you, Ruby? I did. Kathy, maybe you want to do the opening prayer and scripture reading that's on there. Sure. It's in Romans 13, 8 through 14. Well, Father, thank you for today and thank you for this time for us to get together and praise and, and glorify you. Thank you for just filling us every day with all your love so that we can share it with everybody we meet. In mm -hmm. the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Mm -hmm. And oh... No one anything except to love each other. For the love who loves another, the one who, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, 
you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are all summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when you first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies or drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or sensuality, not in quarreling or jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Amen. Thank you for the word of the Lord. Our song is to give thanks, give thanks with a grateful heart. And I think, uh, we, you know, when we first came to Christ, when, we, when God drew us and he gave us a new heart, uh, we, we, we have a heart that's grateful, a new heart that God applies as he's the potter with the clay and he molds and shapes us every day. And it's just a wonderful thing to know that uh, every day we can wake up and say, well, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the meal upon the table. Thank you for the clothes on our bank. Thank you for our retirement and pensions, whatever we've got, our jobs. And that, that is so wonderful. So I really, uh, this song is about uh, giving thanks, no matter what condition or situation we're in. Let's sing this together. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. Jesus, Lamb of 
about that uh, but we have to you know develop that relationship and sanctification every day growing in God's grace and part of that is because God opened our eyes he opened our eyes to the truth spiritual we were blind we were in darkness with the old heart with the old man and woman but now we are, have been opened our eyes by the Lord and a new heart and we see now and so again we want to listen to hear to touch and see our Lord and we look forward to that day. So this song is called Open Our Eyes. So, Father, this morning, we ask you to help even us here today, those watching online, live streaming, Father, 
that they would hear, that you would open their eyes and, and soften their hearts and put a new heart into their, into their lives so they would hear the truth and receive it. We love you, Lord. And uh, Father, today, use me to speak as an oracle of God. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, we're continuing in 1 Thessalonians in the New Testament. For the sound. Well, I don't have this text there, but if you have your Bibles or your app, a Bible app, and those watching at home, if you have your Bibles, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 8, as we're going to look at the title, is called The Walk of Holiness. A Walk of Holiness. And of course, in the scripture reading in Romans 13, we looked at about, uh, you know, talking about being holiness and the same uh, to, you know, about love and not be involved in sexual morality and all this, but put on the Lord Christ and no make no provisions of the flesh to gratify his desires. And so holiness is an, an important aspect, of course, that God is holy and he's holy. And so uh, as, as an introduction, um, I asked a question to y'all is what is holiness and what does holiness mean to you? Well, if you ever heard of R.C. Sproul, he's one of my favorite uh, pastors and teachers. He's pastored recently, but um, R.C. Sproul once said regarding holiness, he wrote this, I notice in our own language and vocabulary, the term holy seems to be used among us, particularly among Christians, as a synonym for moral purity or righteousness. There's nothing wrong with that, but it may be a little bit misleading. In the scriptures, there is one primary meaning and one secondary meaning of the term holy. The secondary meaning is that which refers to personal righteousness and purity. However, the primary meaning of the word is separate, or if you will, theologically apartheid. That which is holy is that which is other, and that which is different from something else, end quote. So in other words, holiness, of course, is that aspect of God who is holy. He said, be holy for I am holy. And because we're going to see a little more to explain about the word agios in the Greek, which means set apart or holy or saintly. Agios, which means to be saintly, which is what we are as believers, born again as saints. So, so far in 1 Thessalonians, we look for, and the title of the message again is, A Walk of Holiness. And so, so far we've seen the importance of prayer in the beginning in chapter 1, about unified prayer coming together, and the importance of faith, hope, and love for all of us. Then we've seen in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 about the elect of God are known and chosen by God's love, and the Holy Spirit of the gospel was delivered and through word and power with conviction of sin and righteousness. Then we looked at the importance of following the leader of the apostles in Christ and to become imitators of them. You know, again, the old cliche, what would Jesus do, WWJD, right? And then later we looked in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 about the importance of bringing the gospel even through persecution. Even though we're attacked and persecuted, we do it because we want to please God and glorify God and be a living sacrifice for the Lord. And then in uh, chapter 2 also, we looked at the example of God, gospel holiness and encouragement. Then we looked at the challenge of being a true Christian. And then missing the fellowship in the midst of satanic persecution as Apostle Paul suffered that. Uh, and then we looked last week at an encouraging report in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 to 13. And today, it's called the Walk of Holiness. We're going to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. And you guys, you know, I preach expository, which means verse from verse through the Bible. It's harder to develop a sermon that way, but it's more in context. It's the, the, the perfect way, I believe, in the way of revealing Scripture, not a topical, but looking in the context of Paul writing to the Thessalonica, to the Thessalonian church, which is based upon many, mostly Gentiles, a very large city with a lot of pagan polytheism, believing men will God. So it was a very good challenge. And of course, we know Paul was chased out of Thessalonica and he's writing this letter from Corinth as, as he was going through Athens as well. But, uh, but he's writing this to encourage them, to instruct them, if you will, on the way of walking with the Lord and being with Christ. So we're going to look at this today. We're going to read the scripture. It's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 through 8. And this is God's holy word. Finally, then, brothers... We ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus, that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual morality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in a passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, 
because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Father, this is your word. Father, thank you for this word. And help us to be transformed in the renewing of our minds. And Father, help us to learn from this. Holy Spirit, teach us this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. First point is this, which is on the hand that on the, on the, I believe it's on the front page. I think I put it on there. Yeah. It's our believers walk in holiness to please God. You and I as believers, we walk in holiness to please God. Well, let me ask you a question. How is your faith today? What pleases you? You know, is it following the Lord pleasing you? Is it your children or grandchildren? Are they, are they loving and obeying you? Are they pleasing you? Or, you know, sometimes it's difficult in this world today where children are involved in so many other things and distractions and their phones and texting. And sometimes you can't even get your own children's attention because they're not listening to you. And so it can be very difficult. And sometimes it's, it's displeasing when, when we have these situations. But here in context, believers are to walk in holiness too, to please God, not necessarily to please man. We've seen that before, but we're going to see this again as Apostle Paul, Silas, and Timothy, as they kind of contribute this letter, but Paul mainly wrote this letter to the Thessalonica. And he says in verse 1 that, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. Just as they were already doing, right? They were doing this already, but they're saying not only what you're doing now, and that's great you're doing this, and Paul's encouraging them, but do it some more and more. Don't forget, you know, don't lose that first love. Oftentimes we, we start we getting selfish, we start thinking of ourselves, we're not thinking about, you know, worshiping God, we get, we, we, Satan and the enemy is good at trying to distract us on something else or get busy on stuff, but, you know, we've got to remember where our focus is, and that is with holiness to please God, because he wants children that please the Father, right? He, Christ wants, as our shepherd and our Lord, He wants us to be followers, His voice, know Him, and then please Him, be doing the right things in our lives, in the process of sanctification, which is growing in God's grace. Well, our walk of faith, what does it look like to others? Do other people see how you portray Christ, or maybe not portray Christ, and where our faith is founded upon? You know, you sit in that chair, you have faith that that chair holds you up. Well, it's the same thing when I walk in Christ. We have to trust, like in a chair, we have trust in the Lord for our faith and to continue to grow our faith. And the Apostle said, increase our faith. You know, we want more. We want more to go through this world and this life. And so our walk of faith, you know, again, what does it look like to others and see us? Well, what we need to do is ask this question is, what pleases our Father God? What pleases God? Well, Basically, it's to follow and obey the instructions of our Lord. In particular, what Paul is writing here to the Thessalonian believers, uh, and, and he wrote this um, after his second missionary journey there, he's talking about this growing walk with the Lord to continue to please our Lord. And in this particular area, he's talking about sexual immorality because of the things that were going on, the orgies as we read and things of that nature. This was a very, very particular time where people were involved in gross negligence and debauchery and adultery and everything else, fornication. So it was a very, very uh, sad thing. They're trying to say, look, you know, you need to, be, need to be careful of this, be careful of your walk, make sure you're pleasing God, not pleasing the flesh and yourself and up, you know, things of that nature, mankind rather than... In other words, having a biblical worldview rather than a worldview where the world says this and the Gentiles do this and the people who are pagans or don't atheists, they don't believe in God, they're doing something else and they're not following God. So Paul reveals our walk of faith as is growing and we need to continue to pleasing the Lord. Just as our children, what? We expect, we give them instructions. If, you've ever, if I was a child, I remember when I was growing up, mom and dad said you had certain chores to do, you have to do this, you go cut the grass, you go take the garbage, clean your room, you know, do those things. You obey your mom and dad. That was part of the instructions they gave you. Well, it's the same thing with our walk with the Lord. The Lord has given us instructions. Apostle Paul is giving the Thessalonians instructions about being holiness, about a walk of faith of being pure, and of course, pleasing to the Lord God. So Paul writes to remind them of how this importance and this instruction to what? To maintain their walk of faith. We have a maintenance. This is, this is our maintenance book. This is a life operating manual, isn't it? 
It's all about this life and how about the next life. And so here it tells us how to operate, how to instruct us, how we are to walk, to do this, to do that. Walk in obedience. And God breathed word, divinely inspired. He's given us through these 40 authors, 66 books. We've got it combined together. And it tells us about our lives. It tells us about people who, the, the frailty of humanity, the fallibility that they've fallen, that they've made mistakes. David, and every, you go through the whole Bible, not is perfect except the Lord Jesus. We all make mistakes. We're all guilty as charged. And same to me. So, you know, it tells us how we can be. God can change us. God can renew our new spirit in us. He can help us through those things. And, you know, Apostle Paul wrote also to the Colossae, to the Colossians, in chapter 1, verse 10, speaking of pleasing God, he said in chapter 1, verse 10 of Colossians, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing what? Bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. How are we going to please God? How are we going to bear fruit? How are we going to walk with the Lord if we're not have, if we don't have knowledge of God? How do we get knowledge of God? Oh, there it is. Read the Bible. It's all here. All the answers for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. In the end times, in the living times of living, as I said in the beginning, it's unfolding right in front of our eyes. And we're not blindsided if we're reading the Word of God. You know, and in our Bible studies, we're going to start after we visit Isaiah. It's got some prophetic words in there. We're going to go to Daniel. And then from Daniel, we're going to go to Revelation because it's all unfolding right in front of us. And people are nervous, anxious, worried about wars, this and that. Well, Christians, we have peace because we know what's going to happen. You know, last days, earthquakes, pestilence, violence, all those things are happening, as Jesus said in Matthew 24, and Mark, and also, and of course, John revealing, and Daniel prophesied this stuff, you know, 2,700 years ago. I mean, 2,500. So, I mean, it's just all right, laid out for us. So, again, what do we have to do while we're here waiting for the return of the Lord? We are to walk in obedience, walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, that's pleasing to Him. We want to please our Father. Just like when we were young, maybe, maybe you know, we didn't have good fathers or bad fathers. We don't know our parents. I don't know your parents. But typically you wanted to obey your parents and please them. So that way you would get your reward, get some money to go buy some candy or something at the store like I would get and ruin my teeth and, uh, and stuff like that. Or you know, or you get some kind of allowance because you did your chores. And so you want to please mom and dad. We want to please God because we know that sometimes... God has to chastise us just like we have to chastise our little children. Discipline them, right? God disciplines us as well. Why? Because He wants us to make sure we're walking on track. And He loves us. That's why He does that. You, if you discipline your child, it's because you love them. You want to straighten them out, get them back on the right pathway. It's the same with us. And that, that's this pleasing of God. Well, what please? how do we please God? And then again, that's because of this obedient walk. It's because we have this... We have an opportunity that so many people don't have. We walk on the narrow road. And many people on the wide road that leads to destruction. They don't care about God. They don't want to know God. They don't believe in nothing. They don't believe that He was a creator. He created us and designed us because, you know, we didn't come for some big bang thing. Uh, you know, how? Well, did the eye come first? Did the foot come first? Did the, did the arm come first? The finger? How did it all put it together? It doesn't make any sense. They have to be a designer like a watch. How many pieces are in a watch? Hundreds of little tiny pieces on a mechanical watch, right? So if I take it all apart, I'm just going to throw it across the room and it's going to turn back into a watch like that. I don't think so. <laughs> Good, put it all back together. Peace. God, He spoke life into existence, Genesis 1, and He created us, He designed us. And even in, He knew us in our mother's womb when He was designing us in the mother's womb, right? The Word says. So again, I think really uh, as more and more, as we get closer to the Lord's coming and returning and for the rapture, my, my sense is to, I need to get more knowledge of the Lord. I need to be ready. We need to be ready. And I want to know, Lord, how can I please you? How can I please you every day of my life? How can I please my wife? I want to make sure my wife's happy. I want to make sure she's got everything she needs. As a spiritual household leader of the family, I'm supposed to do that. And so I want to make sure I, I'm pleasing her. Well, same with my Father in heaven. He's always there. Sometimes our fathers are earthly fathers. I remember my dad wasn't there many times for me. And, you know, there were times I was hurt by him. But my Father in Heaven, our Father in Heaven, He's always there for us. He's not going to let us down. He's not going to forsake us. But He's going to raise us up on the last day. And we'll be with the Lord forever and ever. That's a Father that loves us. Second point is this. Believers walk in holiness by what? By the guidelines or instructions of Christ. Believers walk in holiness by the guidelines of Christ. How many of you follow instructions? 
You know what I mean? But yet, we do, so that's good. Uh, in the Air Force, I had these technical orders, and when you, I'm working on nuclear security systems, telecommunications, this is important stuff of the war and desert storm and things. So, so I had to, uh, you know, sometimes when you have questions, you go to troubleshoot a component, something's went wrong on this transmitter or this going on or this, this sensor. You know, you have to, okay, look, I can't remember exactly how to do this because if I adjust something or do something wrong, I can, I can mess up the whole system or something. And we're talking nuclear bombs here, right? So, you know, so I, I better get that technical order, that, that the, the manual, the operating manual, the instructions, and make sure that I, you know, I make sure I adjust that right one variable potentiometer right there because if I don't, I, you know, and I have to know the tolerance, so I better read the manual. I got to follow the instructions. You know, sometimes when you get these little toys and kids at Christmas time, and dad's going to go and, you know, put it together. I don't need the instructions. I'll just put it all together. And I'll start to see these extra parts. But dad, what's all these extra parts? What are those? Oh, don't worry about that. So, because he didn't follow the instructions. And so, of course, uh, when it comes to holiness, we have guidelines that God has given us to follow. And these guidelines are important. And look at verse 2. It says, for you know what instructions... Or guidelines we gave you through the Lord Jesus, not through Mohammed, not through you know you know the neighbor's dog, not through CNN or MSNBC or Fox News or whatever. Through Lord Jesus, the instructions, and we see the verse three through eight reveal some of the way that Paul describes how the believers at Thessalonica are to please God. And Paul is providing these instructions, in particular, on sexual morality. And about impurity versus, you know, the holiness and the process of sanctification. So let's reach 3 through 5. It says this. For this is the will of God. This is the will of God. Your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual morality, uh, in semicolon, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passions of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. And what is sanctification? Well, sanctification, biblically, is the process of living a saintly, holy life, by the Holy Spirit and following, that which follows justification. Justification is when you said, yes, Lord, God drew you, you got convicted of sin, you confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe in the heart, God raised the dead, you will be saved, Romans 10, 9 and 10, Romans 10, 13, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you realize that, God gave you a new heart and you were justified, just as you never sinned, he washed you clean as white as snow, hallelujah. But after that, this sanctification is the idea and the concept of you're growing in grace. You're growing closer and closer every day on how I can portray myself to others. How do I love God? How do I love others? How do I forgive those trespasses? We forgive those who trespass against us. Uh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, mercy, goodness, kindness, self-control, all those things you know, that, that reveal there is actual or real change over your life. There's evidence of the fruit that God shows you that you are a new creation in Christ. And so again, we follow what? The instructions, the Word of God, by the guidelines of Christ. In particular, Apostle Paul is talking about uh, the aspect of sexual morality. And so again, what is this justification we're supposed to receive? I mean, sanctification, excuse me. It's what? It's the, it is the will of God that we grow closer to Him. He's our Father. I want to, go, I want to be with my Father. I want him to hug me, I want him to hold me, and I want him to love me, and, and I want to love him back. And it's a relationship. And that's critical, I think. It truly is. And I think religion, again, I said, religion of man, doctrines of man, you, you, you don't know for sure, you have no surety of salvation, you have to rely on works-based things. There's so many denominations and cults and things that are all based upon works, trying to please God by doing something good or whatever. And none of us are good. No, not one of the Bible declares. We're all unrighteous. We're, our righteousness is filthy as rags which need to be burned in a fire. We have to rely on Christ and Christ alone for our righteousness. He alone helps us to do that. And that is the will of God, our sanctification. So Paul declares God's will regarding specifically with sexual morality. Number one first is to abstain from sexual morality. Abstain from sexual morality. Well, sexual morality... In the original Greek, is pornea. Guess where we get the word pornography. So in the Greek, it's pornea. And, and the word abstain in the Greek is apeko, apeko. It's to distance, to be away from something. So, so what they're trying to say, abstain, so apeko, pornea, is to distance yourself away from this, you know, 
uh, sexual immorality from this pornographic stuff, pornea, from all these, you know, fornication. Distance yourself. Don't be associated with those things, but stay away because that's part of sanctification. You know, the old man, Mr. Bob Tarasiak, before that say, was, was a fornicator, everything else, and everything else that was bad. But when I received Christ as my Lord and Savior, thank God for Mariana's prayer for three years. Three years she prayed for me to come to Christ. And lo and behold, now I'm preaching the word after 23 years I've been doing it now. But, but it was, I, you know, my lust of my eyes, the pride of my life, I was always wanting to have sexual impurity thoughts and everything else. And, 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 and once God got a hold of my heart and put a new heart in, I don't want to do that no more. I don't want to be involved in those things. I got my wife, and that's it. And you know, and that's the way it's going to be. And you know what's in between us? Jesus Christ. He's the super glue. And she's stuck with me, whether I make her mad and she gets upset at me because I don't do something. But sorry, honey, but you're stuck with me. You've been over 25 years now, praise God. But, but you know, Jesus is the super glue that holds it together. And that's important. It's critical. And so... By self-control. Well, how do we do it? By self-control of the body lust, we can control sexual lust and sexual immorality. And why? Because verse 4 says that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor. Honor each other. Honor thy father and mom and dad. Honor thy wife. We, we honor her. We honor her because if we have adultery, if I have a cheating around or I have another person, you know, that's, 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 that's adultery. Now, she not do that. I mean, that's, that's a sin. But people in this world today are involved in gross things. 50% of marriages have been divorced. And, and, and on and on. And, and adultery is like, oh, no big deal. They even had you know, websites that say, oh, you can go and cheat on you. You know, here's a place you can come and have an affair. No big deal. Again, desensitizing sin is what it is. It's saying it's no big deal. What's the lie of the devil? Oh, you know, don't worry about that. You know, you, you, you don't have to worry about it. You Shall you really die? Remember, you know, the devil told Adam and Eve, you know, you won't die. You'll be just like God. You know? This more we dishonor the Father, disregard God, and just, if it feels good, do it. 62, right? When he took prayer, the Bible out of school, and all those things, and then the sex revolution came along. If it feels good, do it. The lie of Satan. And ever since, we've gone down and down, 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 and we see what's out there today and the disgusting in the world. That's even on the news and the media and everything else. Uh, it's just, it's gone so bad, this sexual immorality. Well, what does God want to do for us Christians? We are to be set apart. We are to be agios, the holy, right? And we have to abstain, apejo, abstain to keep away from those things. And because why? Because God will is to be, us to be holy and honor our bodies in the sanctification process. That's very important, especially the younger people, the young adults. Uh, again, you know, the scene is party Friday and let's go out and have fun and and see how many, you know, women or this and that, man, it's just, it's gone terrible, it's gone, it's, it's, it's a terrible time of living in the level of sexual morality in this world today. Uh, and Apostle Paul contrasts the lost, lost Gentiles who follow the desire of the natural lust of desires, who have no self-control in verse 5, it says, not in the passion of the lust like the Gentiles, who do not know God. We're Gentiles, right, we're, we're non-Jewish, but guess what, we know God, because God has touched us. He's become, he's drawn us to us to the truth. We know that. But we do know God. So in other words, the opposite of that is we are to uh, not follow the passions of the lust. Because we have now been grafted in to God's kingdom. And you know, be holy for I am holy, it says. Well, why do the Gentiles have no self-control? Because they don't know God. They are driven by the lust of the eyes, the natural and fleshly desires. So then Paul continues in verse 6. And that believers are to be holy and not transgress his brother regarding these immoral behaviors. And verse 6 says that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is what? Is an avenger in all these things, as we told you before and solemnly warned you. Apostle Paul is warning them, be careful, don't get involved in sexual morality, because guess what? And don't mess around and you know, and your brother's wife or wrong your brother or stumble your brother in this matter, because guess what? God's going to avenge those things that are, are, are you know, adulterers, the, the homosexuality, all those things can go on and on, same marriages, you know, adultery, living, having affairs, even in, in, in a man and woman marriage. That's going to be, if you don't forget forgiveness, and if you don't ask of God and repent of those sins, then guess what? God is going to avenge them. He's saying He solemnly warns them, and that's a fact. In Hebrews 13, verse 4, it says, Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, 
For God will judge the sexual, immoral, and adulterous. Period. People don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. That's God's word. I'm going to tell you the God's word. I'm not here to preach what can please people. I'm here to please God, period. I'm here to bring the messenger. So don't stone the messenger, but take it and convict it, teach you something, and we go forward because that's what the Bible, the word of God says. Again, God has called us to holiness, to be pure in our thoughts and self-control regarding sexual immorality. In verse 7, Paul writes, For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Well, what is holiness? That purity, it's godliness, it's sanctity, it's piety. In other words, we are saints, and we have to be saintly and set apart. That's what the word I just mean. Paul wrote to the living saints. We don't have to go through some Roman tribunal to begin to saint after we're dead. The Bible declares, says Paul wrote to living saints in Colossae, to, to the Koran, to the Romans. He wrote to living saints. Saint, by definition, is one who was set apart, who was born again by God. And so that person is an agios, a saint. And because of that, we have been saved. We've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We have been forgiven of our sins because it is finished on the cross and we have become holy. So, again, as Apostle Paul once said, he does not give us a license to go and sin and go have fornication and do all the immorality, all these things. No. It's just saying that, yes, we're still in the flesh. We still have fleshly desires. But don't let the lust of the eyes privately control you. But let the Holy Spirit lead us in sanctification, growing in a relationship with our Father in Heaven as we grow in a relationship between our loved ones, our grandchildren, children, spouses, whoever. We, can, we grow in that relationship because we love the Lord. And the same with Him. We love the Lord to grow in it as well. Point three, the final point is this. Believers must abide in God and His Holy Spirit regarding sanctifications. We must abide or be, you know, in, in follow and go follow the things of God and His Holy Spirit regarding sanctification. Well, question, how many of us understand as believers we have to be led by the Spirit of God? Yes, we are to be led by the Spirit of God. Well, what happens if we disregard what the Lord declares? What happens if we disregard it? We, what's that? Stumble. Yeah, we stumble. We, if we disregard what the Lord declares, then, then we're not following the Lord. We're not, uh, we're not uh, obeying God. We're not walking in a relationship. It's like if, you know, if, if, if you know, Mariana tell me something, I just disregard it and say, you know, it's going to hurt our relationship because she asked me a favor. I didn't do it. And I just disregarded her. I just blew her off, right? No, you know, no big deal, right? Well, then that's not going to look good on me. It shows a bad spousal relationship and it's the same with our God he, he wants us to abide in him in, by the Holy Spirit regarding what this growing in grace sanctification and it says there uh, uh, verse 8 therefore whoever disregards this disregards not man but God who what who gives his Holy Spirit to you so disregarding what the Lord God declares in the sanctification process can lead us to follow the leading of the natural things of man, which can lead to sexual immorality or other sins by disobeying God. There's many sins out there that we, you know, that we can follow, as we, especially concerning the Ten Commandments. Do not commit adultery, honor the Holy Father, you know, don't use God's name in vain, uh, don't lie, don't steal, don't murder, etc. But sanctification and self-control regarding sexual immorality is founded upon abiding who? In Christ. In 1 John 4.13, 1 John chapter 4, verse 13, Apostle John wrote this, By this we know that we abide in Him, and He in us, because He has given us of His, capital S, Spirit. So God has given us the Holy Spirit to what? To convict us of sin, righteous judgment, to comfort us, to teach us all things, to be there for us, to help us, to heal us, to go through this life and be able to be led by the Holy Spirit because we need the Holy Spirit that is here right now with the church to help us to overcome the enemy, the temptation and those things in our lives. What did, you, what did God, in, in the Word of God, Jesus, when he was tempted, what, three times in the desert, he said, for it is written. All three times he replied, it is written. So that shows you that for Jesus, the Word of God was very important. For us, it's very important because it helps us to overcome the enemy, it's our sword. We, we defend ourselves with the armor of God, but that's our sword of the Spirit. That's what goes forward. When the enemy comes, we speak the word. The word is our offensive weapon, in a way, if you will. It's our sword. It's a, it's, our, it's our way that we take it in and we can be able to present it to others as messengers of God's word because we know that when we obey God, we abide in Him, we are 
connected with him, and because of that we can overcome temptation, we can overcome those times when we lose self-control. You know, you know, you know, sometimes we'll get upset, we'll get in our fleshly, we'll get weak, we'll get upset, we'll get bitter instead of better. And so oftentimes in our lives, um, we believe we need to be allowed the Holy Spirit to lead us, to listen to that small voice and help us not to get mad if someone cuts us off or, or something happens in our life. And these things happen. It's just uh, our natural sense of natural bodies and our natural mindset, we, we're overwhelmed by some of the things in this world. We, we get caught up in things and, and, and just continually, every day something maybe come up and we're getting involved in, in some kind of decision we have made or someone made an addition for us and we are the victims of some kind of, uh, of attack or whatever it may be and we have to deal with it. Well, the only way to deal with it is to trust in the Lord and help the Lord to help deal with this. Allow the Holy Spirit to give us discernment and wisdom and the knowledge by getting the answers to the Word of God where we can overcome and make decisions in our lives. Uh, how many times have we tried to do it our way? You know, the old Frank said, I did it my way. Or Elvis the Pelvis saying that thing too. So I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's sometimes our way is not the best way. Sometimes our way we stumble and make mistakes and we're like, oh boy, I forgot to pray about it. I forgot to ask God about it. What did God say about this decision? You know, Mariana said, she said, did you press God about it first? You know, did you pray to God about it? She said, yeah, because she's right. You know, I want to go make a decision to do something. I didn't even think of praying about it. Sometimes, you know, we got to make sure, especially big things in our life, big changes or big moves or things happening, uh, we need to pray. Maybe sometimes fast and pray because God wants us to really surrender to Him and seek Him with our full intention in our heart and total depravity of our lives, even depraving us from our food because we want to seek the Lord for an answer in our lives. Well, sanctification, again, is... They're part of growing in God's grace and believers are to be led by the Holy Spirit to be in self-control and to understand, again, what pleases God. We need to understand what pleases God what does not, and what does not please God. And so how? Well, again, we know, to know the Scriptures are important because it instructs us, it teaches us the truth and the knowledge of God and what pleases Him. What are those things that please Him? And throughout the Bible, you can see what a holy life is, what it means to be holy, what holiness means. And again, nothing in us is holy. Nothing in this physical body, nothing in a natural man or woman is in essence holy. It's, we're totally depraved, we're totally separated. Our flesh is weak, but the Holy Spirit is stronger. And when we have the Holy Spirit indwelling us and leading us, that's where God is pleased because we're pleasing to Him, not pleasing the flesh, not pleasing the desires of other things in the world around us, not idolatry, not uh, idolizing, whatever it may be, but putting God in life first. You know, when we think about holiness, holiness is something that only we can get holiness from who? One who is holy. And that's our Lord God who is holy. Jesus knew no sin. He knew not one sin. He was perfect in every way. He fulfilled every requirement of the law. Every tittle even, it says. And that's why he's the only redeemer, the only one way to heaven, the only way to wait is through Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. And just want to share a little thing by, uh, by uh, D.L. Moody. He said this, A holy life will make the deepest impression. Lighthouses blow no horns, they just shine. Let me say that again. A holy life will make the deepest impression. Lighthouses blow no horns, they just shine. We, as believers, also, in our sanctification process, we are to have a walk of holiness, and we must shine, shine toward others the light of Christ. We are to be those mirrors that reflect the love we receive, and the grace, the gift, the favor of God we receive and to others. And that's sometimes that's difficult. Sometimes we get flustered, and we, as I said, you know, sometimes we get caught up in our emotion and our flesh, and, and then of course we got the Holy Spirit convicts us. We repent. We go tell the person we're sorry, and and we try to make it better and forgive and and, you know, grow so we can overcome those times where we let other things lead us in our flesh and desires that can so corrupt this great thing. We see that in the world today. It's not seem to be getting better. But my question is this in closing. How are you in your walk of holiness? How are you? How is your walk of holiness? Are you living as the true saints of God? Are you overcoming the desire of the flesh, the natural worldly desires? The answer to all this is to submit and surrender your life to Christ. His Spirit will help us in times of temptation 
and we need to overcome. I need it every day. Uh, we, are, we need the Lord every day to shine his light upon us and to help us to uh, follow the light of the Lord, walk in his footsteps, and truly be a good follower and disciple of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Apostle Paul, writing this letter to Thessalonica, to the Thessalonians, and again, was an encouraging way. It was instructions and saying, this is what you need to do. Please abide in our Lord and continue to walk of faith because even then, there were perilous times. And even today, it's even worse. We're living in perilous times. God is taking out of our schools, out of our Bibles, out of our universities, out of our Congress, out of everywhere. Uh, they don't want nothing to do with God. And I already believe we're now under judgment in the USA. And it's going to get worse. So uh, that's why we need to be ready. We overcome us. Grow in sanctification. And we got to just trust in the Lord. He'll get us through it all. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you for the blessing of knowing that we have you eternally. Not temporary. Not, not uh, you know, just until we die. But, Father, we have eternal life with you when we trust in you as Lord and Savior. We have you forever and ever knowing that our sins are forgiven. You paid in full our account. And Lord, thank you that we have been considered a child of God, that you drew us to you and called us. And now we are your elect. And Father, we thank you that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. And Ephesians 1 talks about that. And that we, are, we have a guarantee. And that guarantee is better than any life insurance or policy or any in this world. You give us eternal life because of your Son who gave his life and paid the ransom for many. Father, we thank you for the privilege of knowing that we see and we hear and that, Father, you can help us sanctification through your Holy Spirit that guides us and teaches us and comforts us and sheds your light upon us so we can be those messengers to shed that light to others. Father, in this we glorify your name. We pray this to you in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Glorify the name, the last closing song. song, three verses. Father, we love you, we worship and adore you, glorify thy name in all the earth, glorify thy name, glorify thy name.
And thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your son. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that needs to help and guide us every day in our lives. And we do pray this all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Have a blessed day and a blessed week. And we'll see you all, God willing. And we soon meet you. If not, we will meet you in the air. Are, are, did you have a limited um, data on your phone? Because I'm thinking you've got your phone number on here. We could all send you a message with our contact information. You can do that too if you want. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no problem. I have unlimited data. So if you want to send your, uh, send the list to some of you, just the parking number, or email, and phone number in case. You know, I can call you or, you, can, you know, whatever. I just try to get a hold of you because something happens. But, yeah, that'd be great if I knew that, too. If not, I'll, I'll try to put up a little list or make some cards, information cards that we can fill out. I'll try to remember for next week. Either way, thank you. I must have a great blessed week. You too. All right. Thank you. God blesses us truly so much. And it's grateful to be part of God's kingdom and serve Him every day. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah.